Yo, what's up everybody and happy Sunday. This is Rob with Fruit of Labor Landscaping and I'm out here in the Serene Forest. Just wanna wish everybody a happy Sunday and wanna reveal the answer to this week's What Is It Wednesday. And I just wanna thank everybody who participated and all the good guesses that we had. Uh, thank you guys for uh, continuing to, to play the game and support what we're trying to do with raising money for these nonprofits. And uh, I should have reached out to the winner already, so check your notifications and your inbox to see if I reached out to you to notify you as the winner. I need you to tell me which prize you want and uh, to do it within the next few days. So make sure you're checking on your stuff, guys. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this week's plant, which I'm really excited to talk to you guys about. Okay, so last week I showed you this exact same plant here potted plant basically on my side porch uh, getting ready to transition into the back porch and I talked a little bit about why this plant uh, kind of looked really crappy in some areas and that's because of um, a moth larva that hosts on this and, and just really ate it up really good um, but let's go ahead and name this plant so this is a nopal I'll put the scientific and botanical name in text and some people also call this a prickly pear yeah, there's a native species to Florida, and I have that around here. You can all find it a lot of times on the edges of, of pastures if you live around people who are raising cattle. Um, it's, it's typically not this tall, at least when I find it in its, its natural area, that's where it's usually um, only a few feet tall. The flowers are also different. This one has red flowers. I don't see any blooms. This one is obviously uh, not red because it's old, but the flowers are, are a red and the native tends to be yellow. So there's some differences there. Now this cactus has been really easy to grow. It can be propagated just from putting one of these pads in soil. In fact, if you look down here, um, this pad had fallen down or been trimmed by me. I can't remember which one because of just how this plant had been getting damaged from the moth larva. And you can see it's already sprouting um, new pads and that's kind of how it grows. It will come off almost at a joint with new pads. They don't root really quickly, but they don't need a lot to root. So. You could literally take one of these pads and just place it on the ground or or take right here at the the joint is where you would want to cut and then you can stick that in some soil and eventually it will root and you're not really having to water it or, or do anything special to it and then you'll get a whole new cactus uh, plant here the benefits of this in your garden is not only you know if you find the the native you're you know contributing to a good native garden um, but they're edible. So this variety here is spineless and the, the, the native, at least here in Florida, has some pretty good like inch long spines on it. But this spineless one makes it easier to handle and the pad itself is what you're, you're eating. Now there is a, I guess you could call it a fruit that in addition to the flower, but um, this is, you know, year round food right here is this, is this cactus pad. So uh, they're edible for humans, they're edible for animals, and they are really well known in Mexican cuisine. You do need to be very careful about kind of giving these like a peel because they do, even though you see that this is a spineless variety, um, there's little tiny, uh, almost like hair-like, very almost impossible to see fibers all over these pads, especially in clusters around these areas here. And just to touch it, it's really not that big of a deal, but if you stick that in your mouth and try and chew it, it's literally like having like a leftover sandpaper almost. I don't know exactly how to describe it, but I've made the mistake of not preparing the, the cactus pads good enough before eating and it just felt like I had all these little tiny, tiny splinters all around my tongue and underneath my tongue. And it, it just was really uncomfortable for about a full day. So you definitely need to make sure that you're preparing it well. I would uh, boil it and get as much of the sap, I guess you could call it, or like the, the gelatinous, I don't even know if that's the a real word, but this 
jelly-like substance inside of the cactus pad, you wanna get all that out. And so you can do that by boiling it and then people will either grill it <clears throat> or they'll chop it and add it to stir fry or uh, even air fry it. So there's a bunch of different ways that you can actually cook it. It's really good for you. It's got It's really high in fiber. So if you're somebody who is trying to manage your weight, this is a good plant because it's low in calories, but it uh, will fill you up. And, and also it, uh, the high fiber is, is a good food to have um, to burn calories as you're digesting it as well. So not only are they good for weight loss, but they're known to be good for regulating your blood sugar and blood pressure and just kind of some other nutritional benefits in there as well. So for your survival garden or your foodscape food forest, this plant is gonna be perfect for you. All right, so I think I talked uh, more than I normally do, but I just really like this plant for its edible uses and the fact that we have a native prickly pear cactus here in Florida is also pretty awesome because it, it kind of fits all the things that I like in a plant, which is uh, to be productive to the garden and be as native as possible and then also producing food to become more self-reliant so so i was really excited to talk about this plant with you guys and uh again thank you everybody for playing what is it wednesday i hope you had fun with it i hope you learned something that you didn't know before and i hope you guys will come back next week for what is it wednesday have a blessed day guys and a great next week